Hello friends of the Grey Rhino. Welcome once again. In my view, the China economy and the stock market has probably reached a bottom after the China stock market declined by about 22% in 2021. Uh, that is depicted by the MSCI China. So in this year, well, the China government is moving into an unprecedented third term of President Xi Jinping. And I believe in this important year, yeah, the government will want to ensure the economy and the stock markets would be stable and growing. And hence, I think uh, it will be a good time to start looking at Chinese equities again. And the company I'm looking at today, in fact, in 2021, had fallen about 41%. And in my view, the long-term fundamentals is unimpacted, which means today it could be a right price you know, to be buying after a 40% drop last year. So this company is called Ping An Insurance and it used to be a market darling before the market came down. So as usual, I'll be covering the company in this few aspects. Firstly, the business overview, to let you have an understanding what Ping An's business is about. Secondly, the market. Market means how much more addressable market it has so that it signifies how much more Ping An can be growing from here. Thirdly, modes, which signify how well Ping An can be staving off competition, and hence to be able to keep its turf and protect its profit margin. Then we look at the risk of investing in this company, then the financials and valuation. And lastly, I will share with you whether I would invest in this company myself. So, Let's first go to the business overview. Like what the name suggests, Ping An Insurance Group. So the large bulk of this company's revenue comes from insurance business. Two parts, one part the life and health insurance, and second part the property and casualty insurance. Yeah. These two segments make up close to 75% of the company's revenue. Uh, and the next largest portion it is banking business. And the rest of it makes up a relatively small part. Now, let's look at the uh, segregation by income. And by income, uh, even, an even greater portion is actually made up by its insurance business, uh, which exceeds 75% uh, of its uh, operating income is made up from its insurance business. Right. So if you look at it largely, Ping An is an insurance company yeah, with some banking operations. And all of its other business, in effect, is what makes it very special, yeah, which allows it to grow, do cross-selling which I will share later on. This is just an overview. Uh, without going into the detail, just looking at the chart alone, uh, you can look at the past five years chart, it has been uh, gradually moving upwards. Uh, things like its shareholders' equities, um, return on equity, which has been uh, maintaining stable at 17.2%. Its dividends has been growing. Earnings has been growing. So generally, Ping An is a growing company. Uh, of course, it made some setback last year, which caused its price, in my view, to temporarily decline. So next, we look at the markets. If you look at this chart here, generally the insurance penetration rate of the world stands at about 7%. And for China, it is at about 4 plus percent, which means just to catch up to the world average, yeah, that's close to a doubling of business to be done by Ping An. And of course, if you, cons uh, if you compare to more developed countries, you know, like Taiwan, you know, there's a lot of room to be growing. And hence, China today, I still think, is still at the starting phase yeah, of its uh, insurance penetration. And hence, the market has a lot more uh, to go. Yeah. Next, we look at the modes. We should look at it in three portions. Firstly, intangible assets. Okay, what makes Ping An so special as an insurance company? It is not the largest, but it's a special because it is using technology. It's the most technologically advanced insurance company in my view in China. So you look at this chart here. Uh, this is showing the number of uh, AI patents, artificial intelligence patents. 
And uh, down here consists of most of the technological giant, you know, like Tencent, Microsoft. And it would be surprising, you know, for an insurance company to have so many technological patents. And hence, you can see that Ping An it is really a company that is technologically driven, you know, with so many AI patents. Next, you look at the number of blockchain patents as well. Uh, so if you combine all the patents by Ping An in these three boxes here, you can see that it's easily ranked number three in China, just after Tencent and Baidu. And this is also a very surprising statistics for an insurance company. Okay, the next intangible assets is its reputation. Yeah. So if you look at a Ping An Bank, uh, in terms of this metrics, as you see here, you know, uh, rated by TAP Research, it's actually ranked number one. So it's actually got a very good reputation amongst the banks in China. Okay, the next mode, we talk about cost efficiency. Because Ping An is technology driven, it's actually using its technology to be driving down costs. Yeah, firstly, you look at using internet, you know, using internet to be getting its business. So currently, as you can see, the amount of business coming from internet, pure internet, is increasing at the same pace of internet penetration. Yeah, so as internet penetration grows, Ping An is able to get more of its business from there. And generally, it is a low cost way to be getting insurance business. Yeah. And the second use of technology is using its AI to be promoting sales, increasing operational efficiency. As you can see here, just from 2020 to 21, uh, the amount of business from AI has actually gone up by 50, 54%. Yeah. Also, it has been using AI to increase its operational efficiency and also to collect back its overdue loan. And hence, using AI to be driving business, yeah, it's a much lower cost of driving business, which later on you can see in the statistics that is shown by Ping An. Okay, and is this chart here that's what I meant? So if you look at this combined ratio of Ping An insurance over the years, uh, from 2009 to 2020, an average is about 96 percent. Uh, let me share with you what is combined ratio. Okay, combined ratio means premium, less away the payout, and less away the operational costs. How much margin that is remaining? Okay, and 96 means per dollar of premium, Ping An is able to earn 4 cents. Let's look at what is the industry average. So this is a study that is done by Ernst and Young. Okay, so the market average is about 100.6, which means actually the market don't make money yeah, because the cost and payout exceeds the premium. And if you look at it, the yellow zone, 97.4 which means if you can have a lower scoring than 97.4, you're considered a superior zone. And this is looking at global. And the average ratio of Ping An is actually at 96, which means Ping An is actually a superior insurance company in terms of cost efficiency. Uh, and that's due to its using technology to be driving its business and driving down costs. Thirdly, the third mode is ecosystem. Okay, so you can see here, without going into the details, what it means is that Ping An actually works with the healthcare sector and it also has an online doctor yeah, to be cross-selling it to its business. In what way? So if you look at it here, okay, you can see that the number of customers sourced via healthcare services has been increasing over the years from 18% in 2018 to the latest year, 26%. Okay, so you can see that also the number of policies held by customer, yeah, from those who are using its healthcare business uh, on a healthcare platform versus non-user of the healthcare platform. Yeah, the number of policies actually is small, and the, the premium paid by people who uses their online platform is also more. Yeah, which means Ping An is gain, gaining success in doing this cross-selling yeah, from people who is visiting their healthcare system to be referring to their insurance business. And an additional advantage is because it's got all this data, yeah, medical data of people, it enables it to underwrite better yeah, so that it can uh, 
correctly priced its insurance premium. Yeah, so you can look at the cross-selling penetration rate. You know, same from 2016 of about 24 percent to now 39 percent. Yeah, this also shows that Ping An has been gaining success in cross-selling. Yeah, so let's look at the four areas of Ping An where it can do its cross-selling from its healthcare ecosystem to financial services, which includes insurance and banks. Yeah. Because there's also cross-selling that's possible, you know, uh, borrowing from banks to buy insurance product. That's one way of cross-selling. And auto services, you know, which links to what? Auto insurance. Okay, and then the smart care services. So you can see that its ecosystem is really helping it to doing cross-selling. Yeah, and that can bring up the sales and bring down cost. Uh, next, I'd like to go to the risk of Ping An Insurance. So I'd like to highlight three key risks. Okay, the first risk is actually quite generic across insurance company. It's called investment and reinvestment risk. Right? Because as uh, their investment matures, for example, let's say a bond mature, then you need to reinvest it in the current environment, which could be more favorable or more unfavorable. But this is a risk insurance company face. Okay? Right, so I would say that, uh, well, in terms of severity could be high, yeah, probability also uh, moderate. Okay, but as I say, so long as you invest in insurance company, this is probably an unavoidable risk. Uh, secondly, channel reform. Okay, this is a specific risk to Ping An. Uh, what's happening is that uh, over the last couple of years, Ping An has actually been shaving down its insurance agent from about 1.3 million to 800,000, a shaving down of 40%. Are largely in the less productive agents. And the purpose is he wanted to use his technology firstly to aid the productive agent and then also to use his online platform to be selling its insurance. And hence, this can be a lower cost way of uh, achieving the same revenue. But because he shaved down his uh, insurance channel by this amount, the premium, his business, insurance business has also declined about 10 to 20 percent, uh, lesser than its. Uh, reduction in agents and it, aim, it aims to finish this channel reform by the end of 2023 yeah and then it can be growing its business again oh. in my view i think this is a temporary uh, reduction of its business uh, in fact for a long-term good as using using technology to substitute human <clears throat> so this one i will view it as a, a low probability risk yeah because i think it's going to pass oh. but of course uh, in the meantime, the uh, severity could be pretty serious now uh, because it reduces its premium by about 10-20%. And uh, thirdly, also it's more specific to uh, Ping An as well, or China, I'd say, which is a property exposure. Uh, of course, this came to light in the, last, in, the, in the last year because of the clampdown of the property sector by the government. Okay, And then Ping An is one that has been hit by this, especially its investment in uh, China Fortune Land which it had to write off the large part of its equity stake. And it has both equity and loan in China Fortune Land. And that's a lesson that uh, the management shared they have learned, which is uh, to really have a better diversification and also to lump, if in a single company, to lump both the equity and loan together to look at a combined exposure. Because previously, they look at it separately. Okay, and that's the third risk, which is about the property exposure. Similarly, I think this will pass and I rate it as a low probability uh, risk. Okay, and next, let me just look at the financials and valuation before sharing my view whether I would personally invest in this company. Well, so I just briefly summarize what we look at in the financials. Okay, first we look at growth, yeah, which is its revenue growth, its gross profit growth. Uh, and hence, if you look at the last five years to 2020, Actually, Ping An has a pretty good growth rate. Okay, and then we look at the return on equity and return of assets yeah, to see whether it is a productive business. You can see that the only no it has is actually a return on assets. However, this is very prevalent across insurance and banking business, which generally have a return of assets of less than 2%, right? Because of uh, using very high, like banks, you know, generally use very high. Uh, leverage yeah, to be earning its uh, profits. 
Okay, so I won't be alum, yeah, because it's kind of, kind of general across the industry. Uh, the rest of it, looking at its margin, looking at its financial health, I think they are all quite uh, uh, healthy and crosses our crosses my T nets. The last one I'd like to draw to your attention is really the valuation. Okay, so the past uh, uh, the historical price earnings ratio, right, the higher it is, the more expensive uh, of a uh, Ping An insurance is usually is at uh, thirteen times, and currently it's at about seven over times, uh, which means I say based comparing to history. It's actually at a very cheap price uh, because the share price has fallen 40%. Uh, and in my view, yeah, a lot of this risk, a lot of these uh, factors will pass. And hence, I guess by now, you probably know what's my view of Ping An. But let me just share it. Nevertheless, is it a yes, no, or yet to? And you probably guessed it, you know, I will be investing in Ping An in this environment because I think long term, uh, prospect is not impacted however price has came down significantly and hence it represents a window for us to be buying in well so i hope you like this uh, and lastly just to share with you here what i'm sharing here is really for information for entertainment and it's really not for you to be following wholesale uh, and you need to be uh, asking your advisor yeah what is suitable for your own situation before deciding if you want to be investing in this company and hence, I think a uh, very happy meeting you all online once again. And I would like uh, to encourage you all to leave down your comments here if you have, so we can have a discussion. Uh, I also have a telegram that's called uh, The Grey Rhino. Uh, so if you're keen, you can leave it, if you leave your number here, or, uh, or I can leave my link here, and you can join my telegram to have a discussion over there. And hence, this is the end of my sharing today. And to the next time, see you again. Take care. If you'd like to be listening regularly to The Grey Rhino YouTube to gain more financial knowledge and also investment wisdom, do subscribe below to The Grey Rhino YouTube channel and remember to turn on your notification.